Good afternoon, PCR Online. I'm going to uh, summarize the REFLECT2 trial that was presented today by Dr. Jeff Moses at the TCT Connect. Now, this study is a second phase of the uh, REFLECT, initial REFLECT trial, uh, and its aim was to look at the latest iteration of the TriGuard embolic protection device, the TriGuard 3. It was a two to one randomization, and uh, they looked at the historic um, uh, controls. The inclusion criteria were native aortic valve disease with via transfemoral approach. Exclusion included prior aortic valve replacement, recent stroke or TIA within the last six months, uh, advanced kidney disease, severe peripheral vascular disease and abnormalities detected by cardiac CT. The, 30, the primary endpoints were a 30 day safety endpoint, which was a composite of all cause mortality, stroke, life-threatening or disabling bleed, advanced kidney injury, coronary obstruction, and uh, major cardiovascular complications and VARC2 uh, valve dysfunction. The primary endpoints in terms of efficacy were evaluated both uh, using a pre-specified um, intention to treat and per treatment protocols. Um, the secondary endpoints were um, also looking at device performance, uh, and in addition to that, they had um, per, um, diffusion weighted imaging uh, MRIs of the brain uh, to see cerebral ischemic lesions. Um, they enrolled uh, uh, after enrollment approximately 179 of the 225 initially uh, planned for randomization uh, completed the study. Um, the baseline characteristics, the age was uh, 80 to 78 to 80 almost with uh, males approximately 55 to 60 percent. Diabetics were about 40 percent of the, of the uh, enrolled population. Prior stroke and TIA um, was um, the, the only significant difference really here was 17 in the combined TriGuards 3 compared to the randomized controls, which was 5.3. Um, and carotid disease was very similar at 19.9% against 23.2%. Um, when we looked at the procedural characteristics, they were very similar in both arms. Um, when we looked at um, the safety flow uh, of these devices and the outcomes, the life-threatening bleeding uh, was more in the TriGuard, but it did not reach statistical significance. The vascular complications, which were TAVR-related, uh, were more in the TriGuard arm, but not really related to the distal protection, to the embolic protection device itself. In terms of in-hospital uh, stroke and 30-day, it was similar, not reaching any statistical significance in either arm. And when we look at other endpoints, such as the composite of all-cause mortality, uh, cerebral ischemia, and so on, once again, whether you look at it with intention to treat or per treatment protocols, they were not very different. Now, the post hoc analysis, uh, several studies have demonstrated that lesion size on diffusion weighted MRI uh, imaging is associated with clinical symptoms. And so that was really the basis uh, for their post hoc analysis. Um, and when they did in fact do it, there was suggestion um, that there was improvement, but it did not reach statistical significance. So the REFLECT2 trial met the primary saf safety endpoint um, that the TriGuard 3 embolic protection device was safe in comparison to the historic uh, TAVR data. Uh, when looking at primary 30-day uh, safety endpoints, it was higher in the TriGuard, primarily driven by TAVR uh, vascular complications. And uh, when we look at the post hoc diffusion weighted MRI analysis suggests that the TriGuard may reduce uh, ischemic uh, lesions. There's a signal to suggest that. Now, uh, similarly, the STS um, registry was presented uh, at the TCT and it looked at the various um, patterns in the United States. So when we do look at the STS uh, registry data that was presented at uh, TCT, um, it gave us a reflection of the pattern of use of uh, embolic protection devices in the United States. And it showed that over the last two years, there's been a steady increase in the utilization of these devices, um, but only about 28 to 30% was the utility of this device. Um, but there was significant variation in all uh, the, between the centers. And when looking at the pre-specified primary analysis, uh, there was no significant reduction of in-hospital or 30-day stroke in the STS registry either. So um, really in parallel with the REFLECT2 uh, data. But when secondary propensity weighted analysis was done um, for, uh, there was a modest reduction in stroke. What this does tell us is that perhaps it's time for large randomized data 
that look at endpoints that are meaningful. So not just uh, strokes as we define them today, but perhaps including neurocognitive function and uh, perhaps including uh, T-weighted um, MRI studies of the uh, brain uh, to uh, determine whether there is imaging diagnosis of the strokes. Thank you and hope to see you again uh, in another episode of PCR Online at TCT Connect.